there is nothing greater than an individual's right to freedom. Yeah. If you love liberty, declare your independence by signing the Shire Society Declaration at ShireSociety.com. Thank you for coming out. I'm one guy, this was an idea I had, and you guys are supporting this like crazy. You're sending it out to people that you know, probably a lot of you shared the event, and you feel the same way I do about our country and about what's happening, or you wouldn't be here. So I can't tell you enough how much that hits me in the heart. Because right now my heart is broken for my country. And this stuff is very personal to me. And I'm very passionate about it, thank you. And we can't be the silent majority anymore. Okay, we can't, we have to be the vocal majority. I moved to New Hampshire, my parents moved to New Hampshire when I was like three years old. All of my, all of my adult life by choice is in New Hampshire. And I believe live free or die is something that we need to bring back. Woo! Yes, New Hampshire must be the cornerstone of that rebirth of liberty. General John Stark said, live free or die, death is not the worst of evils, of all evils. Okay? In Plymouth, where we just passed a mask ordinance, where I just came from fighting a week ago, they have a cannon in front of the town office that was actually captured by General John Stark. And inscribed on the plaque, it tells of his victory. And right in front of that cannon, in front of over 30 protesters, they passed the mask ordinance. The powers that be have forgotten our founding. They have forgotten what we stand for. America was founded in individual liberty, individual responsibility. And that's what we need to get back to. We really need to get back to that. Amen. We have seen erosion of our rights, of our liberties, of the ability to express your ideas without fear of retribution, the ability to go about your daily life as you want without fear that somebody's going to cost you or the police are going to harass you or you know your neighbor is going to come down on you. We should not be afraid to live our lives. We should not have to lie and claim an exemption to live our life unmasked. You shouldn't have to lie for your beliefs. You shouldn't have to make up a lie to be able to go about and be conservative or libertarian. I don't believe in that. You should be able to say what you want to say and do what you want to do as long as you're not hurting somebody else. We need to band together. We cannot be the silent majority anymore. You cannot be afraid of offending your neighbor or offending your, your, your friend if they are truly your friend and they truly love you and they're truly your family, they might not agree with you, but they will not shun you. They will not hurt you. They will not talk bad about you. If your opinion and your beliefs in love of country and love of freedom get you shunned, get people doing stuff to you, they, they make you lose your job, then you are better off without them. And I have a degree in microbiology. Now this is why it absolutely infuriates me that we are created fear, panic, and uh, control of using <laughs> using a virus to control all of us. A virus is in our air everywhere. Bacteria is in our air everywhere. We have all kinds of pathogens that are out there that our bodies, when we take care of them, and we uh, you know, make sure that we eat right, that we drink plenty of water, that we're getting plenty of sleep at night, that we're taking and, and practicing good hygiene, that when we do that and we are careful when we, are, when we ourselves are feeling bad, we stay away from things, that's when we are able, our bodies are able to fight off all of the past pathogens and if you listen to the microbiologists they'll tell you that you need to exercise uh, you need to get in contact with other people and touch other people so that your your um, immune system keeps generating over and over and getting better and better so you can fight off those pathogens so that's why I think that we need to uh, one of the reasons that it upsets me that we're we're running away from this COVID virus and the other thing that I think is absolutely unconscionable is the only thing we hear about right now is COVID, right? Do you hear about anybody that's dying from opioid overdoses? Do we hear anything about anybody who's dying from a car accident? Are we hearing about anybody who's dying from a heart attack 
or who's committing suicide? No. We need to know that we have someone in the corner office that respects our liberty, that will understand that the governor only has an emergency order ability when he's under attack. We are not under attack. We, the people, can, if given the proper information, can make good decisions on our own for our own situation. We, the people, know what's best for our children. We should be able to choose which schools our children go and go to and how they're, they're educated. We, the people, should be able to open up our businesses and conduct business as we see fit. Thank you, everybody, for showing up today. I'm Dan LeClaire. I am running for state senate in District 10. Um, how many of you heard my ad on the radio, and that's why you're here? Yeah. All right. So, we're here, it, it, it's, it's brought about with the mask mandate, but it's actually more than that. It's about government taking away our rights to be able to decide for ourselves what we should do with our own bodies and what we should wear. Every single person has a right to life, liberty, and freedom. Those are our God-given rights. And so far, our government, starting at the top in Concord, he has taken away a person's right to be able to own and operate a business. He has decided on who is essential and who can go to work and who can't. He has said that you are not allowed to go and worship at the place that you choose. That is taking away every single right that has been granted to us. When the City of Keene Council spoke about this whole mask mandate, their biggest statement was, we need to do this for the greater good. If you look throughout history, the worst genocides that have ever happened started with the phrase, the greater good. And I am here to tell you today and to let the city of King know and the rest of the state of New Hampshire that there is nothing greater than an individual's right to freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you everybody for coming out here today. Really appreciate it. We couldn't have done it without you. Uh, I'm running for uh, state rep here in Keene, but that's not the reason I'm talking to you today. Uh, masks. They're anti-human, you know, on a fundamental level. I can't see your face. I can't see your expressions if you've got a mask on. Social distancing is anti-social. And remember, you know, I understand a, a lot of people may have certain favorites when it comes to their political beliefs and such. I love freedom and the federal government is not your friend and the mask mandates and all these social distancing rules they came from the cdc and it doesn't matter if it's trump and it doesn't matter if it's barack obama and it doesn't matter if it's biden these bureaucracies stay the same it's the same bureaucrats most of the time they'll change out ahead here and there trump will come in he'll put a few new heads in but the bureaucracy stays the same the taxes go up, the regulations go up. Even when the Republicans were in total control during the Bush administration for a few years, what did the government do? It got bigger. So the new batch of people who want to seek power aren't going to do anything different. They're going to use government to reward their friends and punish their enemies. That's what the government does. That's what the federal government does. That's what the state government does here in New Hampshire. And remember, New Hampshire, I think, was the first, correct me if I'm wrong, if it wasn't, it certainly was the first three, of the states to declare independence originally from the king. So I think it's time to do that again. It's time for New Hampshire to yeah. declare independence from the United States. Right on. Okay? I don't love the state government either, though. Okay, because they're also enacting this mask tyranny. They're enacting, but the thing is, they enacted tyranny before that. Okay, so when you talk to a lot of these business owners here in Keene about the, this ban or this, uh, this mask mandate, they'll tell you they're afraid. Okay, they are afraid of being ticketed 
They're afraid of, you know, court. They're afraid of potentially being shut down. And they're afraid of having, like, a health license or a permit pulled. Well, the problem came in when the first business owner asked for a permit. When the first government mandate came down on business owners saying, oh, well, it's for your, it's for your own good. You just need to ask permission. You need to ask us, these bureaucrats, who don't actually do anything productive, for permission to be a business owner for permission to serve your customers in the way that you want. And so right now, you've got business owners who are, they would love to be able to make a choice for themselves, but they're so afraid of what the city gang will do to them that they won't. They'll just quietly go about their business. They're just trying to make money. They don't want to rock the boat. They didn't get into business to do activism. They just want to help people, connect them with their product or service, and the city of Keene stands in the way and the state government stands in the way. If we've got 100 people here, and I think we absolutely have, um, I think the governor passed an order this week saying that you have to have masks on or else the organizers can be arrested for misdemeanor charges. Wow. Because if you don't do what the governor says, it's a misdemeanor. You're going to jail for that. So it's insane. Um, I've got some flyers about New Hampshire declaring independence and why it's time to do that again. So I'll be around here. Uh, passing them out, and thank you so much for listening. Uh, nobody, did you want to? Did you want to speak? Nobody's running for uh, governor. He's the other option on the ballot. Karen is obviously a great choice as well, but uh, he's going to speak to you about voting for nobody. <laughs> we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights that amongst these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that it is to secure these rights that governments are instituted amongst men, deriving their just powers from the consent of, go of the governed, and that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, well it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it. That is where we stand today. I've, I felt sad listening to the first speaker because I used to feel about this flag the way he feels about it now. I used to reveal the founding documents of this country so much that I've got memorized big hunks of them. That was the second paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, if you didn't recognize it. But what I see today, I moved to New Hampshire because the other 49 states are lost causes. Okay? And my belief is, if New Hampshire continues to keep its wagon pitched to California and to New York and to New Jersey, we, they will be an albatross around our necks and they will drag us down into socialism and slavery. And I, for one, would rather let them go to hell in their own way than not take me with them. The point is that your government today is doing things that you think only other people's governments do. It is engaged in murder. It is engaged in extortion. What is it? What's the difference between Brinks Home Security and the Mafia? Brinks, when Brinks Home Security sends a salesman to your house, and says, we want to sell you this security plan. And you say, no, I'm not going to buy it. They don't tell you, well then, we're going to kill you. The mafia says, if you don't buy our product, we're going to come and burn down your house. We're going to come and kidnap you. We're going to come and torture you. We're going to come and kill your children. Now, which of these agencies 
with the government most right. What does the government do when you don't want to pay the taxes to fund the madness that they call public policy? They throw you in prison. That's what they do if they don't kill you. That, for those of you who noticed, is why I took a knee when they were doing the, uh, doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Because I cannot be, I cannot have allegiance to a power which is at war with me. That would be insane. That would be welcoming my own destruction. And I do not welcome my destruction. And I will do everything I can if you make me governor to keep this state the freest state in the nation and to make it the freest state in the world. Right on. The first thing that I will do when I take office is I will pardon every victimless crime in New Hampshire history, starting with the gun crimes. Okay? I'm not talking about shooting people. I'm talking about being in possession of a firearm. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of the free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms will not be infringed. Every single gun law is unconstitutional by the federal constitution and by the fake state constitution. It is time to stop negotiating rights away with the NRA and take matters into our own hands. Yeah. I feel much better. That was kind of cathartic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you letting me rant. I feel much better. I hope you all will vote for me. It, it probably won't change the outcome of the election. One vote doesn't. But if the message you want to send is that you're as mad as hell and you're not going to take it anymore, Say it with a vote for nobody. Because nobody knows how to live your life better than you do. And nobody deserves that kind of power. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to hear from different viewpoints. I love it. You don't have to agree with everything everybody says. That's kind of the idea of what we're doing here. So take what you want from everybody that speaks. Leave what you don't and try to grow, okay? I want to read you a quote, all right? Because I was talking about New Hampshire history and I love this state. I got it tattooed on my arm. I've been here since I was three years old. Wasn't born here, but that wasn't my choosing, okay? I want to read you a quote. Some of you guys probably heard this. And down here in Keene, you might not be real familiar with the old man of the mountain, but where I live up in the Plymouth Campton White Mountain area, the old man of the mountain was one of our trademark staples, and we love to go see it. We look forward to driving by it when we went through Franconia Notch up to the great north country, and it saddened me specifically and our communities when he fell. And I want to read you a quote, and you might have heard this. And you don't have to be a religious person to believe in the stuff that we're doing, but, you know, take it for what it's worth. The quote is from Daniel Webster, and he said, Men hang out their signs, indicative of their respective trades. Shoemakers hang out a gigantic shoe, jewelers a monster watch, and, a dent and the dentist hangs out a gold tooth. But up in the mountains of New Hampshire, God Almighty has hung out a sign to show that there he makes men. <laughs> First I want to say it's so great to see all your happy, smiling faces. Um, I've done a lot of ma research on masks. The masks are not going to stop the coronavirus or anything else. A virus is about one micron in size or less. The pores on the mask, your cloth mask, your surgical mask, your N95 mask, they're all bigger than that. So the, the 
the uh, virus is going to flow right through. The other thing that happens is when you put on a mask, you, the rate of oxygen and carbon dioxide that you're breathing changes. It's easily measurable. There are OSHA standards as to how much oxygen should be in the air when you're breathing. Your oxygen level will actually drop to below OSHA standards when you put that mask on. The other thing that happens is as you're breathing out, all of the germs and bacteria and things that get trapped on your mask, the mask is a, becomes a warm, wet surface from your breathing, and all of those germs are going to multiply. It's like a Petri dish. So you're going to be breathing those germs in. People have developed fluorescence from the mask. They develop staph infections around where the mask is. They've developed um, bronchitis. When you breathe out, you're breathing out waste products. When you put on a mask, you're not getting rid of those waste products. The other things to consider, there are things, um, if you are deaf or hearing impaired, you really need to be able to see faces, to be able to, to see what people are saying, and it's really discriminatory against people with that. Uh, mask also uh, hides smiles. Smiles create a sense of wellness and everything's good. When you put that mask on and you walk around the store, you notice the stores with all these masks, people, the energy's dropped. People get angry, they get uh, impatient, then they're not nice people. Our joy has been taken away from us. Because we are social creatures. Hugs actually increase our, our immune system, make us feel better. Smiles make us feel better. We have been conditioned for, we have been being conditioned for a new normal. And I like to say the new normal is not only not normal, but it's designed to, um, to take away our humanness. Because we've been isolated, especially our teens, they're very social, there's been suicides. Um, the fact that we've been holed up and not be able to do things like go to church and, and create social bonds, people are getting depressed. Um, there are a lot of situations too, like schools, when there are kids in abused homes or, or wives that were abused, a lot of these people use jobs in schools and that was their sanctuary. And now they're all home and everybody's getting anxious. So a lot of the abuse, both sexual and child abuse, has increased during this, um, during this so-called pandemic. Um, suicide rates are up, drug abuse rates are up, alcohol abuse rates are up. The whole, the whole pandemic, uh, scandemic, has really done a job and taken away our humanness and destroyed our, our, our state and our country. I think for now that's it. Um, I just want to remind you, when tyranny becomes law, you have a duty to resist. We have to address this as a nation of individuals. And I think somebody already kind of said it, but I heard a great quote, and it said, if you claim to speak for the minority, but you do not stand for the individual rights, you don't stand for the minority because you, sir, are the smallest minority. You, ma'am, are the smallest minority. The individual is the smallest minority. Freedom and liberty is the answer. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for coming. We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters.